Now that regular air services operate up and down New Zealand, the weekend habit has widened its scope. When father was a young man, the voyage from Wellington, capital city of New Zealand, across Cook Strait to Nelson, was quite an adventure. Today, it's just a mere three quarters of an hour hop from the busy capital to Nelson, New Zealand's sunshine province. Naturally, Nelson's main thoroughfare is called Trafalgar Street. But we've no time at present for more than a brief glimpse of the city because tea is waiting for us in the grounds of one of Nelson's beautiful homes just three quarters of an hour after leaving Wellington. After tea, there's always a game of tennis and if we must be strenuous, a swim in a private pool after that. Bathing is practically an all the year round pastime in Nelson, the holder of New Zealand's sunshine record. Certainly the old New Zealand company made a happy landing when they chose this site for a settlement in 1841. But the hundred pioneers of Wakefield's time would scarcely recognize the thriving community which has grown up from their little cluster of homes. Some of Nelson's public buildings, notably the beautiful Anglican Cathedral, are well known to visitors. Nelson's lovely parks, too, provide an almost tropical background to a quiet half-hour stroll, while beautiful white swans add the correct finishing touch to ornamental lakes. But if sightseeing doesn't appeal, there's always the golf course. Nelson's Easter Golf Tournament attracts golfers from all over New Zealand who have a good holiday and uh, also play some golf. Though they can't all sink putts like this. And if your golfing gets you down, there's always beautiful Tahuna Nui Beach, where Nelson's sunshine sparkles on golden sands and glorious rolling surf. Now we are privileged to present a glimpse of the might of New Zealand's sea power, the Nat Fleet. Tahuna Nui is more than 50 miles from the entrance of Tasman Bay, or Blind Bay as it is often called, so that bathing could not be safer. And the calm waters are also ideal for yachting, as Nelsonians discovered some time ago. Given Mother's scrubbing board, the fast motorboat, and the necessary sense of balance, these calm waters are ideal for the fascinating sport of aquaplaning. Though unless you want a ducking, it's better to be looking on from one of the luxurious pleasure yachts than actually doing the spectacular work. After that, one likes a quiet cigarette which takes us to fertile Rewaka Valley and this attractive view of a tobacco farm. It looks too good to burn, doesn't it? It's hot work tobacco picking and Nelson's sun burns the bodies of the pickers as brown as the leaves they gather. New Zealand's two and a half thousand acres of tobacco lands produce annually about two million pounds weight of leaf, worth nearly 200,000 pounds.
deftly working girls then take the leaves and hang them out to dry. Here is the raw material for a pleasant hour or two. Hmm, it seems a pity that it'll all end up in smoke, doesn't it? And that brings us to another raw material growing just across the road. Nelson is the largest hop growing district in Australia or New Zealand. In the season, young people from all over the country make up parties to come to Nelson for the hop picking, thus combining a pleasant holiday in the open air with plenty of fun and a good salary. Here's a sight to make anyone's mouth water. Yes, even at this age it seems to have a certain fascination. It makes one wonder what they can possibly use all these hops for, doesn't it? Or does it? There is a tavern in the town, in the town, and there my dear love sits him down, sits him down, and drinks his wine with love so free, and never, never thinks of me. Fare thee well, for I'm a treaty, do not let the party be without us. And here's a real load of happiness ready for the hop kilns or oast houses, where the hops meet the first of the series of processes which concludes when the product is finally turned out in a neat glass wrapper. Uh, but we'll leave them there. It's making us all too thirsty anyway. We go a little further afield in search of other interests in this garden district. Our road winds along past sheltered bays, fragrant orchard lands and fascinating rock formations, while an occasional tree fern reminds us of New Zealand's national emblem. On the shore at Motueka, a stone pyramid commemorates the landing of Captain Wakefield and the pioneers of Nelson Province at this spot a century ago. On the beach, an old anchor brings memories of storms and perils of the sea those intrepid adventurers face in their search for new land. Long before man had created the great apple orchards of the Nelson district, nature had decided what industry this favored land was best suited for, and set up here this great natural memorial, Split Apple Rock, as a permanent reminder that Nelson's wealth comes from, well, from orchards such as this, where we see Tasman apples being picked for export. In the shade of the old apple tree, when the love in your eyes I could see, when the voice that I heard, like the song of the bird, seemed to whisper sweet music to me, I could hear the dull buzz of Government field instructors are always anxious to assist growers to improve their crops of the different fruits. And a series of rigid inspections ensures that all the fruit exported is up to the highest standards set by the strict government grading regulations. In the factory, experts sort this fruit into sizes and grades. It is packed at high speed. The packers you see here are working at their normal rate. The film has not speeded up the action at all. The gentleman in the uh, attractive costume is carrying out an important operation. The lettering on the cases enables the experts to tell at a glance just what apples that case contains, when they were picked, and from what orchard they came also their ultimate destination. Every year, New Zealand exports, besides other fruits, over a million and a half cases of apples, a great proportion of which is loaded from Nelson's wharves. And so a final glimpse of the calm waters of the bay brings to an end our weekend visit to Nelson, 
New Zealand's Sunshine Province.